to reach Daratul Funun, you have to manage your way through the narrow winding streets of uh, Jabal al uh, But when you enter Daratul Funun, you find yourself standing on a hill overlooking the heart of Amman and uh, facing a, a, a magnificent 180 degree view of the old city, which used to be the site of ancient Philadelphia. Daratul Funun means in Arabic a home for the arts. When you visit us, many people have said that they feel magic in the air. And I feel time stands still. You have the past and the, 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 the present alive together that are telling our story throughout the ages. All this work has been done out of a sense of duty for the country and out of love. Maybe a part of my personal story, because I don't know my country, and we lost everything so many times. And in my lifetime, I lived uh, nine, ten wars, and civil wars, and intifadas, and things. So I realized, um, you know, what do we leave behind? And actually, what we leave behind is art. I feel blessed that in my life uh, I have met two extraordinary people who have changed the course of my life. My husband, Khaled, who uh, supported me, believed in me, and believed in my vision. And we, I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to carry on without his unwavering support. And Fakhr Nisa Zaid, uh, my teacher, my mentor, my friend, uh, she opened the horizons, uh, infinite horizons of art to me. So uh, I feel truly blessed. So I go back to the beginning 25 years ago. Uh, in 1988, uh, the Abdel Hamid Shuman Foundation, uh, which is the first private foundation in the Arab world, one of the first, uh, established in 1978. Uh, they started uh, doing, uh, around 18, 1988, uh, some exhibitions, mainly, you know, ceramics, craft, etc. So, me being an artist myself, and mainly because Khalid Shuman, my husband, uh, was the, the, the president and deputy chairman of the Arab Bank, and of the uh, Abdel Hamid Shuman Foundation. So I started directing the activities of uh, their, their hall, which used to be a, a I used it into, transformed it into a space for exhibition, a gallery, but at the same time, they used to have lectures and talks there. And the idea was uh, to support uh, uh, Arab artists at a time where there was no interest whatsoever uh, in Arab art unlike today. It made us aware during the four years, five years where we had this gallery of their need to have a, a place where they can uh, work, exhibit, the exchange ideas, discuss it. So we started uh, in 92 restoring the first, uh, the main building uh, and, uh, and the archaeological site that we found in, uh, in the site. I'm, uh, I'm very proud of what has been done because uh, um, I looked at it with new eyes. I, d I did not know downtown Amman, so everything was new. I looked at it with the, 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 the discovery, the magic of seeing this, 
beautiful site. And then mainly because had we not done it, it would have been destroyed. Uh, it was com the houses were co and the archaeology was completely uh, abandoned and not registered. It would have erased our history. Yeah. I think uh, it was important for us to to, uh, to embrace our past. Pierre Bacay uh, did the, the the church. It's a uh, Roman uh, b built a Byzantine church built over a Roman temple. Uh, Pierre thinks it uh, might be uh, the the site of the uh, temple of Hercules and uh, or dedicated to Saint George. And at the time, uh, Al Khadr is represented. Saint George is represented in Islam. And uh, Muslim used to come and pray there for, because of the cave. So it's a symbol of tolerance, you know, of openness, of uh, uh, togetherness. We chose a space that is in town, near downtown. The, my, my statement, we could have easily um, built a space somewhere modern, but the statement was that art is not luxury. Art is, uh, uh, artists are witness uh, of their time. And then to have a space where the public can come, all, all kinds of people from all walks of life, to, to be open, to the people and to be for the people and by the people, let me put it this way. So we asked uh, Ammar Hamash, the architect, to, to restore, uh, to renovate the, the, the first building and uh, equipped it with exhibition halls and uh, a space for the library and workshops and uh, uh, protecting uh, in a very sensitive way what used to be old, but at the same time putting in it a state-of-the-art you know, uh, halls for exhibitions and so we had the best lighting at that time. It was a, a novelty to have a lighting, diffused light uh, that uh, we brought especially like the museums abroad and uh, to have a, a possibility of uh, presenting whether video art or painting or etc. I think, uh, in general, it's very difficult for architects to be invisible. Uh, and that's probably because of the way they're educated. Unfortunately, architects are educated to over outsmart the place or outsmart the site. And uh, I think in the Dara situation, I wanted to do the exact opposite where I didn't want to have an architectural uh, imprint left. So you, you, f you should, when it's finished, you know, I felt somebody should go in there and feel that it was always like that. Um, every single stone, every single block of stone was uh, shaped by, uh, till the 70s, was shaped by uh, uh, chisel and a hammer. Uh, and that comes from archaeology, from Petra. Uh, the Nabataeans and their very fine chisel marks. But I, I, I could still apply this until the 70s when we switched to electric uh, cut stones and uh, then the chisel became secondary. So uh, I think this element is, is important to me and I felt that those homemade homes uh, were, were very important. And of course, the history of specifically Dart al Funun, you know, with uh, the British mandate period and the dignitaries who lived there, 
uh, was, was also very important. And what is very unique about Daratul Funun, it's you have in the same compound, next to each other, houses, one house, the main, the first house built by a Jordanian, the second house, the two houses here, the blue house and Dar Khaled, built by a Palestinian, the headquarter uh, house built by a Syrian, and the Lebanese, uh, the last one, by a Lebanese, which is the story of what we call Bilad al-Sham, you had the people, they used to uh, move around, buy uh, land, intermarry, live here or there, uh, a shared common history that was unfortunately disp disrupted by the saks pico agreement uh, that uh, changed the, the, the face of our region. It is important what we have done in terms of preservation but I insist it's not about the stones. Our work is not about the stones. It's about the, the people who lived in these houses and who made history in the past. And it's about the artists today who are making a history for the future. The title explains itself, I guess. It's uh, an ongoing project um, called no How to Build Without a Land. It's uh, more of a, uh, like an attempt to contemplate on the meaning of dwelling and building uh, without a land. I'm trying to uh, deconstruct the word uh, dwell in Arabic. I chose Sakana in particular because uh, it, it means uh, to remain, but also it means to be in, in peace, to stay in peace. And uh, dwelling is building as cultivating. It's not only to stay in a place, it's to cultivate in the space you are. I was born in Kuwait and then came here. So basically after the Gulf War, so my relationship to Jordan is pretty much um, determined by, by, uh, by the geography of the region. <laughs> uh, being Palestinian, being uh, born in Kuwait, uh, like so many other Palestinians, and having to be in Jordan after the Gulf War, I think, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a stereotype. It's uh, something that happened to uh, a big portion of Palestinians. Uh, and, uh, and there's also something to look at uh, in this matter because um, then Jordan becomes this refuge uh, but also could be a, a temporaneous that is also transformed into a permanent situation. Uh, one of the works also is um, a, a map, like a four meter and a half map of uh, um, retracing the frontiers of Palestine through of Palestine through Syria, Jordan, Lebanon and Egypt uh, and somehow uh, deconstructing the line and reattaching it in an imaginary way uh, it's an imaginary line become it becomes an unrealistic line because it does not exist in this form and being traced on one side that is the opposite side of Palestine is I guess it's like a manifestation of a presence that is defined by absence or the inaccessibility to something. And I guess this house as well is an evident of, of that. The houses actually of Dara are like the absolute evident of, of, um, of the situation or like a trace of how it was and how it became. The, the first house uh, was built by uh, Nimr Pasha al He was the mayor of the city of Salt. 
And the first house, it was from the early 1920s. We know for sure that Pik Pasha, the British commander of the Arab Legion, when the Emirate of St. Jordan was established, used the first house as the headquarters of the Arab Legion. And uh, it, stayed, it stayed, the first main building remained uh, in the hands of the British till uh, the, uh, he, he left and Glob Basha, after him the second commander, uh, became the commander, the very mm, famous uh, Glob Basha, became the commander. He didn't choose the house as headquarters, but it was a club for the officer, for the British officer. So till 1956, this, the main building was with the, with the British. After that, it became a school, and then uh, it was abandoned. But the importance of it, for me, it reflects you have in Daratul Funun the ancient history from the Roman time to the Byzantine and later our ancient history. Then you have the history of the independence, political independence of Jordan. Uh, then you have the Blue House, and the, there you get the Circassian uh, f family, uh, you know. Uh, so that was the up where the little fountain, the Blue House, and this why we gave it. Uh, we've added that uh, that wooden uh, 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 porch in, in front uh, to remind, and with the bright blue color, with the indigo color, to you know bring that. Circassian touch because in Circassians in, in Amman are very vital, you know, they've created the beginning of the city. So, in honor of the Circassian who built this house, we did a Porsche, a blue Porsche, uh, using the same material they used to, to, to use and then the same natural dye they use in their buildings. And in, at the same time, uh, it was honoring our first director of Darat al Funun, who untimely passed recently, Ali Maher. So it was only natural to have Turkish structure in at Darat al Funun. So the, there you have this um, the, the military governor of Akka living there. Here in this Dar Khaled, we, uh, we learned that uh, the Sheikh uh, Fuad al Khatib uh, lived here for a while. Sheikh Fuad al Khatib had accompanied, uh, accompanied uh, King Abdullah the first in his trip to Jordan and he was a poet and considered to be the poet of the Arab revolt, the great Arab revolt. And uh, at the time, uh, the, for uh, seven months, Suleiman al-Nabulsi, who used to be the first prime minister, he was actually under house arrest here. So <laughs> it's fascinating, you know, it's really a, a history through through the time, through ages. Our thought has always been that uh, we, we are there to, to receive and to present all what is the most contemporary works that are done by artists in the Arab world and from the Arab world. And I truly would like it to be an oasis for, for research, for uh, innovation, for production uh, of new uh, ideas. So one, we established, we realized one of the problems in the Arab world is that uh, we do not have uh, in-depth studies of the history of Arab art. So we established the fellowship uh, three years ago. Uh, for uh, researchers, PhD doctorate uh, uh, students who, who, will, uh, who will study Arab art. Uh, we are uh, digitalizing all our archives for, uh, to make all the, our experience of 25 years uh, open and accessible to the public and to researchers. At the same time, we, we want to, to, to concentrate on uh, the resident artists who come here, spend time, are inspired by the city and 
uh, learn from us and we learn from them. And this is the spirit of our 25th anniversary exhibition. So I'm here in the context of uh, the um, 25 year exhibition of the um, of the Darat al Funun and uh, within that uh, you know for that show uh, uh, Adriano Pedrosa invited a, se a set of 14 uh, young artists from uh, mostly the south hemisphere the southern hemisphere of the world uh, i.e. the margins to come and have a series of conversations over the course of two months so um, to do kind of residencies, but also a more intense uh, uh, discussion between, between um, the 14 of us in two groups of seven. The space that the Darat offers both uh, as a physical space, but also what's more important is that it offers a mental space. Because a lot of, um, a lot of artists, whether they are Arab artists or not, uh, but definitely artists from the margins, come from places which are fraught with um, with issues that might affect your, uh, the clarity of your thoughts. And so what I mean by mental space is that the Darat offers you like this oasis to think in a way. Uh, and that's how I, I experienced it in, during the months that I was here. The piece is titled um, uh, The Dead Sea in Three Parts. And it's a three-part sculpture that's um, uh, that's made with, uh, that has a base of foam and then is being currently covered with mud from the Dead Sea. The piece comes out of a, of a larger kind of body of work that I've been very interested in, which is the, the way in which, uh, you know, social, political, economic decisions affect not only um, uh, animate objects like humans and animals and plants, but they also affect uh, uh, form. It starts with the fact that uh, in 1947, when the, with the UN partition plan of Palestine, the Dead Sea was uh, actually divided in three parts. Uh, so it was, they basically kind of took a, a, a pen and they, as they were dividing the land, they also divided bodies of water. And so kind of starting with a very simple idea, you end up with an object that is this kind of strange looking thing, uh, but that could be traced back to a, a political act which, uh, um, which you know, radically transformed this entire area. I also feel there's like, a, yeah, like I said, a more quiet side to this, to this tragedy, which is, uh, a formal side uh, and for me it's important to introduce that also in the discourse. This year has been a year um, where we did a lot of work behind the scenes, um, partly because um, it was, well it is a very exciting year, it's a 25th anniversary year and um, so we had a very big, just opened uh, uh, Hiwar, Conversations in Amman, a very big anniversary exhibition so that took a lot of our energy. 
This was the first time we had so many artists at the same time, all from the south of the world, all from the same generation. They're all born around roughly 1980, 1985. Um, so that was quite a challenge. And then to have them for a month, seven in September, seven in October, um, producing work, which we didn't require, but out of the 14, 12 actually managed to produce new work, which was, which was beyond expectations. <laughs> So uh, the other thing we've been doing is working on the uh, collection book, um, a book about, it's not just about the Khalid Shaman private collection, um, which is the collection we host here. Um, uh, it's an amazing collection, that's, but it's about, yeah, it's over 800 uh, artworks. Uh, and that's interspersed with uh, eight academic essays. Um, by leading uh, scholars on uh, aspects of Arab art and then um, interwoven AR like 29 personal reflections of people who've had something to do with the Darat, with Darat al Funun uh, over the past uh, 25 years. The role of Darat al Funun for the artists, we've always tried to move with the needs of the artists. So when it was established, it was a meeting place for artists, and it, and it still is, but it, at the time, um, uh, it was just after the uh, first Intifada, um, then you had the, uh, the first Gulf War. Um, so a lot of artists came from either Baghdad or, or Palestine uh, to flee violence from their countries or even from Lebanon. Um, and I think that at Afnoon was very uh, influential in giving um, a space for, for these artists to develop and to talk to each other. The other thing that's very important about Darat al Fanun is that it is a private foundation and uh, it's very rare in the art world here in the Arab world to have private foundations from initiatives such as this. The fact that uh, private patronage is really important is because we have lack of education in, in the Arab world. Like if you think about uh, a place in the Arab world where you can get like a, like a postgraduate degree uh, for art or for, for cinema, whatever, it's, it's, either, it's either not there or very few. And, and I think here, uh, the, here comes the role of the private patronage to, to uh, like provide uh, new opportunities for, for young artists and young producers to learn something new in order to, to improve their, uh, their, their capabilities and, and improve their skills, which, which is something that they, can, they cannot get over here. And I, I, this, is, this is something really appreciated that what, what they have done uh, at Darat here, bringing people from all over the place like from all over the world, from different, many different places around the world, to Jordan, to have this conversation here in Jordan, to make people learn about Jordan, but also to, uh, to make us learn from each other and from each other's experiences.
I'm originally coming uh, from Jerusalem. This is where I grew up most of my life. And uh, thanks to this residency, Adart al Funun, because uh, it, it, the, the fact that I, wa that I was in Jordan, and Jordan has a very big legacy uh, with uh, migration issue and refugees issue, and uh, the recent issue with the Syrians. And uh, so I started to investigate more about uh, the idea of, of uh, refugees, their circumstances, how they are, um, why they are living, how they are living, and how they are living here. But uh, also, I was lucky in the first place to look at this photo. And uh, when I just deconstruct this photo, I started to think about what really the gas represents nowadays, and thinking about uh, all, all, all the. Um, like most of the wars that are happening because of the seeking of the resources and seeking for gas and oil and which creates civil wars or di direct occupations which really cause people to leave their countries to another locations and become becoming migrants or refugees and uh, thinking about the home as a as as, as a hope for for people and to look for better situation or to rescue their lives and then I, then I, I, this led me to this idea of building a skeleton of a house, which really, which really represents the, the simplest logo of a house, because I really wanted to, uh, to think about what really home represents, like home as a home, at home as a shelter, and home as a home country. And using these four gas barrels uh, on top of wh where, the, where the house lies, is also like uh, creating a mobile situation, but it's not able to, to, to move because it's, in, 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 because it's surrounded with four walls and uh, it's basically somehow simu stimula simulating the same situation of, of moving a shelter inside a shelter, which is the refugee camp, which is inside a bigger shelter, which is, a con which is the country. I think mm, uh, art is an element of hope and of uh, introversion and uh, trying to criticize, to understand the, the, the world we are living in. Maybe art does not operate change, but it does record, it does document, it does um, mm, uh, criticize and uh, point finger it does, at the same time, it speaks of even if it's uh, so difficult and at times so violent, it speaks of beauty as well. The work which is shown here uh, at the Dara is called uh, Execution Squares, where uh, I photographed uh, in three different cities in, in Syria uh, public squares where they uh, executed criminals. And uh, this has been something from uh, the Ottoman period where uh, occupation of Syria, like 500 years ago, where they used to hang criminals in, uh, in the main uh, square of the city. The idea came when I was, uh, I think I was 13, 14 years old and uh, I was going to school uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning uh, uh, on a bus and right next to my father's uh, shop and also it was close to our house, uh, I encountered or I met these three bodies hanged uh, on this platform and their eyes were open. And uh, this image, I, I, it, it never went out of my, uh, <coughs> my head. It's, it's been always there. And uh, if you look at these images without looking at the title, it, it's, it's very boring images of squares and like very cold. And once you read 
execution squares as a title but without knowing a text then you start immediately imagining and looking and searching where are these bodies in these images. This image is it's where I came from actually and it's, it's uh, my father's studio where I grew up and for me this represents uh, everything I have done before studying, uh, before becoming a uh, photographer or an artist. I spent more time there than I spent at home with, uh, with my family, let's say. And the, the, the reason I took this image, it, it was because uh, two years ago, before things started, the events uh, in, in Syria, my father wanted just to stop the, the business because neither me nor my brothers wanted to continue the, the shop. So uh, he decided just to stop and rent out to, uh, as a space. Uh, and it, it was then when I had this idea to document the space because uh, it, it's, it's a very dear place for me and I just didn't want to forget, uh, forget it. Darat al uh, I mean, uh, since I started, it was for me a place where I really wanted to come because it, it is one of the first and uh, only residency uh, or art space, uh, let's say, in the region. In, in Syria, we, we, we hardly had any uh, space where we could show works. And uh, that's why we, I, I was always uh, had this fantasy to come and uh, to show at the Dara because Dara is such a big place and important place to show. Uh, so, I, I mean, uh, I, I always had it there in uh, the back of my head, just I like, I would love to come one day and present my work here, uh, especially because most of my work is related to the region and where I come from. And uh, Jordan is, uh, Amman is four hours away from Damascus, so there's a lot of things in common we share. It, w it, was, a, it was very uh, important uh, center for me just to come and be here and present my work. I do believe that artists are witness of their times and if I may say, I feel they are the oracles of the future. Uh, on, uh, on the facade of the main building, a work by a South African who came for an exhibition here. Uh, it's, uh, it says in Arabic, neon light, installation that says there is a light that never goes out. And he used it from a, a song from the Smith. So you have this beautiful facade of the headquarter uh, and with the sign, there is a light that never goes out that you can see from all over the other hills in Amman and the symbolism of, you know, an art, art that never goes out and the importance of art and uh, that I hope will not go out.
I want to see people and I want to see life.